Indonesian President Joko Widodo has been re-elected to serve a second term in office. He declared victory after the election commission announced official results of April's election today. Now, Mr. Jokowi got 55.5% of valid votes, but his challenger, Prabowo Subianto, has rejected the result and has vowed to challenge it in court. And for more on this, we're joined in studio by Associate Professor Leonard Sebastian, coordinator of the Indonesia program at the S. Rajaranam School of International Studies. We'll get to the challenge by Prabowo Subianto in just a moment, but firstly, uh, the election commission decided to release these results results at a rather odd time, 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, it's precisely to deal with the possibility of demonstrations. I suspect uh, there was always going to be a potential for, for demonstrations. Mm -hmm. And uh, the early announcement diffuses the situation somewhat. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so what factors do you think contributed to Jokowi's um, victory this time? Uh, I think the, the better than average uh, voter turnout was definitely to his advantage. Uh, most of the analysis uh, predicted that voter turnout would be low. Um, I think this time with uh, significant polarization on the ground, um, fears over the possibility of uh, a greater Islamist uh, presence uh, within the uh, administration or for that matter within society had uh, the effect of uh, creating this momentum uh, against uh, Prabowo Subianto, and that significantly benefited uh, President uh, Joko Widodo, so turning the, uh, the, the the tables on uh, on the opposition. Now he won by a bigger margin in, in this election, absolutely, uh, which is an encourage. He'll take that as an encouragement uh, and as a sign of sort of an endorsing of his presidency, I suppose. But what are some of the main challenges that he faces going forward? Mm. Okay, um, I would say there are two areas that he has to to really work hard uh, to improve his record. Uh, one would be uh, the area of human development, mm. uh, particularly education reform would be critical. Uh, the second issue would be uh, socio-economic inequities. You know. uh, that has always been a major problem. One of the reasons why the opposition movement is so strong uh, at 44 percent. So he would have to, to address these two areas uh, specifically and of course continue with his infrastructure uh, development uh, programs. Okay, but then that's not the only challenge because Babo Zumbiato has said that he's not going to accept this, uh, the result. So what can we expect in the coming days? Are we going to expect perhaps maybe some sort of a protest um, you know, on the ground with um, Babo, you know, galvanizing his um, supporters? Uh, there may be some, but I, I would expect the, uh, the protest numbers to be small, primarily because we are in the Ramadan month. Uh, people are more focused on, on religious issues and religious matters at this time. So the, the timing of the announcement is also perfect in that regard uh, because it effectively uh, diffuses uh, the situation due to religious sensitivities. Uh, but I anticipate that the next three days will be important because uh, uh, Mr. Prabowo Subianto will have to uh, provide the evidence necessary uh, for the... Uh, issue to be uh, now uh, moved to the Constitutional Court for, for deliberation. So he has three days uh, to do that. Uh, if not, by May 28, uh, the President uh, will be announced. Uh, so uh, if uh, adequate evidence is provided, uh, the Constitutional Court process begins. So we will see that process uh, start probably on the, the 17th of June, and uh, that will lead to a result by the 28th of June. And that result is binding. Mm. And do you foresee that this is going to go down the similar path as it did back in 2014, Prabowo Subianto losing, but also challenging uh, the legitimacy of, of the election and then ultimately not being successful? Mm. Uh, yes, I think uh, that will be the uh, development. Uh, however, you, know, you have to understand that uh, politics in Indonesia is transactional. Mm. So the question is, uh, what will the president offer to diffuse the situation? Uh, who will, will he bring on board? Uh, and uh, we're already seeing splits within uh, Prabowo's coalition group. Uh, the Democrat Party, PAN, maybe even PKS may decide to, to join in uh, uh, with President Joko Widodo. Primarily, it is transactional. It is the benefits on offer that will be 
most important in the long term. Okay, well, thank you for helping us understand the pieces on the chessboard. Certainly. Uh, Associate Professor Leonard Sebastian from RSIS.